everybody. Drive Through Sports with Adam and Paul. Adam Freeman, some of you from Atlanta, Georgia. Paul Brees is in Brentwood, Tennessee. After putting in a full day of work today, Paul, fill us in on what's going on. <laughs> I'm tired. He's, I'm exhausted. <laughs> Having to get up at 6.45 this morning was a uh, – you know, in the, in, you know going in that you need to get up early, right? Yes. Oh, yeah. But coming at midnight last night, I was like, I got to go to bed. I got to go to – I couldn't pull it off, man. I couldn't listen, pull it off. Listen, it's going to be a rude, rude awakening when I have to get to a schedule. Because <laughs> let's be honest, here's my schedule, all right? I go to bed like 2 every, every night, 2 o'clock. That's – that's when I'm like, you know what? It's two o'clock. Okay, not, I don't need to be up past two o'clock. I need to go to bed. Then I go to bed. Then I can't sleep till like four. So what happens? Well, I end up sleeping till like eleven. Roll out eleven, cup of coffee, eat something, try to find something to do around the house. A lot of times it's working on the website. It's working on our episodes, promoting our episodes, changing things, uploading new things. Um, and then it's the afternoon. And I got to be honest, like 4 o'clock, it's nap time, dude. You got to be down for a solid hour and a half. Get up. Get something to eat. It's, it's time to eat. Go sit out on the porch for a couple hours. Seriously, I, was sit, I went today and bought two rocking chairs so I could be more comfortable out on the porch when I go sit out there. And then me and you, we get going at nine o'clock. We're usually an hour or so in doing our episodes. And it's spend another, I'll spend another hour or so um, posting everything and, and tagging everybody in it. So, I mean, that's my day. That's my day. Uh, you know, oh, I, I skipped the part where I play about 96 holes of PGA Tour 2019 every day, probably. Um, but that's it, man. Once I got to get to a regular, program like you had to do today i'm gonna be in trouble i am gonna be in trouble Um, so we do spend our time doing some other things and that gets us to some of our uh, talking points here tonight the first one you brought up and i've been following you follow this religiously and there's a reason why you do and you can get into that in a second but coach doug's coach doug's on twitter um he posts he posts his best plays and he's playing, I guess, the season uh, of NCAA football 2014, sharing it with everyone through Twitty, through Twitter. And you've really grabbed onto this. Well, first of all, NCAA 2014, probably the best sports game ever. Yeah, ever, ever, ever. I mean, I have, um, I have, I have uh, NFL, whatever the new NFL game is with Patrick Mahomes on it. For PS4? Right. Played it one time. Played it one time. And if I had if I had a two uh NCAA football twenty twenty, I'd be playing it night and day. I'd never go to sleep. The two the fan proposed bedtime, that would never happen. Just (laughs) all night playing it. It is you're right. It is the best game ever made. All right. So Coach Doug's fictional character made up by a uh Uh, a member called uh, Big Cat from Barstool Sports and Coach Doug's is his climb to prowess in the, uh, as a head coach has, uh, you know, gone from Texas Tech and, and um, other smaller type schools. Then he got, except he got an offer to coach the University of Tennessee. Currently, I think he's eight and zero, nine and zero. Had to do a two point conversion for the uh, the win last night against Bama. Had the cigar ready, and, and the funny thing about this whole whole thing is, he, because of his schedule with uh, with Barstool, he can only play it at night. Kind of like how we do our podcast. <laughs> but he he has a young child. He's got a baby, and he's whispering the whole time in the Twitch stream, and. Um, it is just uh it's just hilarious. We can't wake up the baby. You know, he's he's just like he's yelling in his whisper voice. Um, that's great. But Coach Doug's great. very entertaining. And uh we would love to uh man, love to see Tennessee get another natty. I mean it's been a long time, ninety eight. So even if it even if it's virtual. 
Absolutely. I mean, we never know if this thing's going to even happen in August. So I would take any national championship right now. That's awesome. So hopefully Co- Coach Doug's can, uh, can, uh, can bring it home to Knoxville and K-Town. If, and uh, we'll, quit. we'll continue to follow him. I know um, we follow Barstool and Big Cat. Um, and uh, we can only get them to follow us, man. That would be nice. But uh, we'll keep repping them um, along the way. All right, so that gets us to uh, topic number two here. Um, it's interesting that J.R. Smith would make the headlines again on this date in 2020 because it was almost four years to the day, I think. Four years to the day or three years to the day? Uh, it may have been I, 17, so it may have been three years. Yeah. Um, where <laughs> near the end of, I believe, game – was it game five? Um, he just just lost mental focus, man. Yo. I'm at, no, I was I was giving oh, yeah. Jr. Here's what you got to yeah, do, buddy. He, <laughs> he doesn't call. He gets the rebound and it's just like ah, I don't know what the score is. I think we're <laughs> ahead, so I'm just gonna drill it out. And LeBron just goes nuts. Um, but that's LeBron's boy. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. So yeah, the the official word is May 31st is National Jr. Smith Day now. Yes, yes, especially in uh, the Pacific Northwest. And uh, around San Francisco and uh, Northern California, um, but J.R. Smith makes the makes the headlines for a little bit different reason. Obviously, with a lot of, a lot of civil unrest uh, going on in large cities all across the nation, uh, Atlanta was not immune to it. Nashville was not immune to it. Um, but uh, I think he was in. He was he in. Uh, where was where where is he? Is he in L.A.? Yeah, he's in some suburb in L.A. somewhere. Okay, so apparently there was protesters like in his neighborhood <laughs> vandalizing his vehicle. Yeah, it, it, he tells uh, a story today <laughs> that he was actually – apparently he's a, he's a pretty big gamer. He likes to play the game, sure. He's playing Call of Duty, had his headphones on, and he happened to look down at his phone, and one of his boys says, hey, flip the news over. The protest is heading down your way. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, JR was like, what? <laughs> he didn't know anything was going on. <laughs> you know, hey, he was focused on Call of Duty or something. He's in, and, he's uh, in, the, he's in the zone big time. <laughs> so, anyway, that, I just thought that was an imp- interesting uh, side piece to the story. That's funny. That's funny. He's kind so, of trying to stay in his shell, uh, put the blinders on. and uh, Yeah, so well, he walks out, right? He yeah. gets outside. He's taking pictures. He, he's – he says he starts, uh, you know, getting involved with the, the protest. And then all of a sudden he gets word that somebody's damaged his truck. Somebody points the guy out and he starts chasing this guy and just <laughs> lays him out, gives him a couple of WWE foot stomps once he's down. When the guy gets back up, hits him with the uh, sucker punch right across from behind. Never turn your back on anybody. No. The guy stumbles. And bails out. Jr. feels like, all right, that's enough. All right, <laughs> his boys went over there and kind of broke it up. But Jr. Smith, you know, he, he he's a hundred percent peaceful protest. He says, he says, but you know, it's just like in all these protests, the people that are antagonizing and, and hurting the people that have no, you're, you're you're hurting the people. You know, he goes. He basically said he was the only African American guy on the block. <laughs> And that, you know, he, he was like, you got to be kidding me, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you're looking at, you're looking at a, you know, a small handful, uh, you know, of individuals uh, that are going out there, not, not with, with all, with all intent uh, just to wreak, wreak havoc and, and chaos. <clears throat> and the majority of folks um, are, are doing it, you know, with, with the right mindset and unfortunately, they're getting hijacked by these other, by these other folks that are coming in later, post curfew, and just you know, uh, being basically they you know not not following any any sort of order or anything like that, um, right. which, which is unfortunate. And he got caught in the middle of it. And of course, somebody you know whips out a phone and puts in fi- and films. It. You know, this is um, everything you can find a video of everything 
if you if you if you want to know if you want to see anything because everybody puts it on their phone. All right, that gets us to our third topic is the NBA restart. This is really interesting because there's so many different options out there. They haven't gone with one. The one that that was getting a lot of traction was the 22 team restart in in different cities um, with you know taking into account bringing the teams what made it 22 teams and not 16 was there are six teams that are within six games of the eighth spot. Uh, and they're going to, they want to include those teams. And to me, they want to include those teams because the new Orleans Pelicans are one of those teams. And, you know, everybody wants to see Zion Williamson in the playoffs. You know, uh, it would be great for ratings because you're not going to have fans So everybody's going to be watching it on TV. Everybody wants to see Zion. Um, So I, you know, I think that's probably what's going to happen that you'll have it in two places to, you know, limit travel Uh, Vegas and Orlando. It seems like are going to be the two obvious places. I don't know. What do you think? I mean, I, I, I hope, you know, that the NBA can get something done. I tell you what, if there's anything right now that could help this country, mend this thing and take some of the ease off everything, it would be professional sports. Yeah, they got to get back dis- together. Just the distraction yeah. of something going on, because right now the only thing we see is is uh, what's going on out there. Which, and, it's all, you know, and it's all negative. It's all yeah. negative. Yeah. I mean, people are trying to do good, but, but. you know, I, I would love to see the NBA get this thing done. I would love to see – Dame Lillard <laughs> go a hundred percent here. And uh, I don't know if the trailblazers are part of that. They are. They are. Okay. They're part of the yeah. six. I yeah. would think so being what three and a half yeah. back of eight. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. So there's, that would be 20, that'd be 22 teams that they would, they would put in there. They would have to play in uh, for that last spot or something along those lines. And there's, there's, I think two or three other plans that, that they had talked about that, that could possibly be an option for for them getting back um speaking of things getting back high school workouts in the state of iowa started back today you started camps today yeah Uh, and 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 twsla allowed high schools to go back to uh workout conditioning as long as they followed guidelines it was like 10 at a time uh, yeah you have any of your coaching friends that that were a part of that have you talked to any of them about how they went, how it went today. Was it smooth? Were they temperature checks, all that stuff? I mean, not, not personally. Um, I, you know, I do know that there was a lot of <laughs> nervous <laughs> nervousness because you didn't, you didn't want to be that school that messed up. You didn't want to, you know, yeah. um, but because there were so many restrictions that were being take taken place. I mean, to have small groups of 10 space them out six feet, um, you wanted to have another group, they'd have to be 10 feet away from that group of 10. Yeah, yeah. So just, it, it just, you know, it's hard that, uh, but you know what, baby steps, right? And uh, the TSSAA, uh, the Tennessee Secondary Schools High School uh, Executive Director uh, heard on an interview today that, you know, he said, listen, this is a fluid, you know, yeah. situation. He says it could change at any moment. But currently, you know, this is the progress and the steps we're taking. And I tell you what, I'll take it. I'll take yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I, I think any any time you're you're moving forward and, and you're and you're getting kids back on campus, um, working, if nothing else, for the socialization part of being with your teammates again. I think that's a huge thing that we're overlooking here. Besides the fact that hey, let's get back to practice and get back to playing games and this that. These kids need to be around each other. You know, and, and it needs to be – we need to, you know, be able to put them in a situation – in a safe situation where, yes, you can be around your teammates and work out and let's get back to this a little bit of normalcy here. And I think that's that's when everybody will kind of, you know, you have to embrace this new normal a little bit. So, um, that's good news. I think here in Georgia we can't start till the 8th. So, next Monday is our first day when we can start. And that gives us basically – or is it may be the 15th now. Uh, and that would give us two weeks before we have the traditional dead week during July 4th where nobody can do anything. 
I think they right. give everybody two weeks before that, so that's why the uh, June fifteenth uh, time um, that gets us to um, this next topic, which is you know as much as I love baseball, I mean, <laughs> these guys, owners, players' union that they have a golden opportunity to bring in new fans to galvanize the nation, much like they did after 9-11. And they are mucking it up big time. They are just, it is an absolute dumpster fire, what they're trying to do. It's, this week is critical. If they can't get anything in place and start moving towards getting guys, you know, the NHL figured it out. You know, you guys need to figure it out. And if it doesn't happen this week, I think that I think they're scrapping the whole season. I think the owners are leaking this information that, oh, hey, we're fine canceling the season. I think that's I think that's a lie. I think that's a trap. They're trying to they're trying to get the players to cave, and uh, they're doing it by just saying, "Hey, we're okay with scrapping the whole 2020 season." Uh, there's so many things that are – the optics here are so bad for Major League Baseball. From the Oakland A's owner, uh, I think his name is – what's his name? Oh, my goodness. I don't know his name, but I know he's worth over $2 billion. Okay? So – oh, Finley. Uh, it's not – Charlie Finley was his dad. but uh, So Finley's worth over $2 billion, and he just cut the salaries of all his minor league players and said he's not going to pay him. Okay, that looks bad, all right? And, you know, I, I think they've got to figure this out or they're going, to, they're going to lose a lot more than games and a lot more than salary. Hey, shout out to Middle Tennessee native David Price. Oh, big time move by him. Uh -huh. And, yeah, I mean. 220, 220 minor leaguers, he's going to pay him for the month of June, right? Yep, he's going to give them all $1,000. $1,000, yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, he can't – if he doesn't pitch an inning for the Dodgers, doesn't win a game, to me, that's a class move. He, former Commodore, that's a, that's a big-time move by him, recognizing that these guys don't make enough – they don't make any money anyway. Yeah. You know, and a lot of, for a lot of these guys, these teams that got cut and they're not getting paid, they may never play again, ever, professionally minor league and they had now have no shot at getting to the major leagues, which is sad because they've probably been playing since they were five years old. Uh, so, um, you know, it's, it's, it's unfortunate. They need to get it going. They need to make a decision and they need to come to an agreement before the end of this week, or we're not seeing any, any baseball this year. That's my opinion. Yeah. So, well, that, hey, let's end on a happy note here. Let's go, let's go. Let's end on a happy note. Let's do this. Let's do this. Oh boy. All right. So here's the deal. Human interest side, human interest side is basically our, our favorite ice cream treat. Our favorite ice cream treat. What was your favorite ice cream treat growing up, Brees? Listen, I, all right. I wanted to make sure is we it had. Too, the, is it too tough to name one? Well, it's not. It's not. <laughs> but I'm a, I'm a, I'm a purist at heart. Man, give me a chocolate milkshake, buddy, and I am set for a life. I know it's not some fancy schmancy thing. I, I know what you may say. You 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 may say the Shoney's. Um, what was that dessert they had? Uh, they had whatever you wanted, brother. Um. Doggone it. Oh, wow. Anyway, um, yeah, man. Chocolate milkshake from either Baskin Robbins. Oh, wow. And uh, they, could, they somehow need, knew how to do it right. Currently, as a chocolate milkshake connoisseur, Chick-fil-A has their act together. Chick-fil-A yeah. has their act. The Chick-fil-A, yeah. The, the one ice cream place that doesn't have their act together, Sonic. Sonic, and when it comes to shakes, really, I would have see. I see you catch me off guard because you know my history with Sonic that I don't frequent that establishment. That's right, due to a very bad uh, experience. Yeah. Uh, 
<laughs> so so I can't I can't refute the fact that the Sonic milkshake is terrible. Um, but I can tell you and I can agree, yes, the chick any Chick-fil-A product, you're you're pretty good with that. So I, I agree the uh the Chick-fil-A, uh, the Chick-fil-A milkshake of any flavor is gonna do you right, guaranteed. Um for me, for me, it's it's pretty simple. And if I have to go to a restaurant to get some, if I if it's a, in an eating establishment. If it's an eating establishment, then I got to go Dairy Queen, Peanut Buster Parfait. It's got everything you want, okay? It's got peanuts, got chocolates, got vanilla ice cream. However, if I'm talking about just an ice cream treat that I can go to Publix and I can purchase in a box of 12, okay? <laughs> it's the Nutty Buddy. Yeah, there he is. Listen, the Nutty Buddy... It's it's so simple, okay? It's so simple. Just look at it, okay? I mean, you can now get them in your choice of original or chocolate. Now, Brees, you know me. I'm a simple guy. I'm, I'm an original guy. I'm an original Nutty Buddy guy. And, you know, quite frankly, you really relish eating the top of the Nutty Buddy. Because, <laughs> because once you get once you get past the top of the nutty buddy, it's just an ice cream cone. It's that, that top that's frozen with the nuts and the ice cream and the caramel and the chocolate, all that that makes that nice little sort of, sort of pent. It's like the penthouse of the ice cream cone. Okay. It's the best part. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you gotta love it cause it starts to, you know, melts by the time you get down to the cone, it's melting, it's running down your arm and you just you look at your elbows and everything. But the Nutty Buddy, I'll tell you what, and what got me on the Nutty Buddy was because my grandmother was, uh, she was the manager of the cap, uh, cafeteria at Lipscomb Elementary for 30 yes. years. Um, and everybody that went through there uh, remembers her. Um, and when school was over at the end of the year, dude, you can't just, you can't just leave ice cream in a freezer for two months. All right. So whatever was left over, it came home with us. Nice. She had a freezer in her garage full to, I'm talking like the garage freezer, like that opened up like a coffin. It was as big as, I mean, it was huge. Okay. Full of nutty buddies, push ups, ice cream sandwiches, um, popsicles just for days. You could swim in popsicles. And maybe my favorite, Either, not my favorite because I love the Nutty Buddy, but if you want to change up, you could go with vanilla cup or, or chocolate cup with the wooden spoon. <laughs> Dude, I'd eat like, I'd walk, I'd be going outside to play. I'd eat like three of them on my way by. <laughs> a couple outside with me. It was just, you know, every time I passed the freezer, I grabbed something out of there. It was just uh it was That's awesome, but that that got me that got me indoctrinated into the. All right, let, let let me let me give you some nutty buddy advice. As there's always connections of why we like each other so much, and nutty buddy is one thing that <laughs> I should have thought of. Uh, one, purity, purity dairy. Yes. All right, based out of Nashville. Yep. Does it? I mean, one, their chocolate milk is. Unreal. We would have to go to another conversation upon that. Yeah. Oh, we can't. Not enough and, time in the show. But Nutty Buddies was, is a is a purity dairy product that is like legit. Like it would be the king of Nutty Buddies. You know, there obviously there's offshoot Nutty Buddies. Yeah. But purity, it's, it's, it's which the is the fun. one probably your your grandmother. Oh yeah. Had from from yeah. the school. Always. Now, always. I I probably am guessing that you do not get purity products down that far near Atlanta. No, no. It has. It's typically like a some type of good humor or something like that. You know, it's yeah. a it's a different kind. Um, so there's a, there, purity, it, there's a difference. Yeah, <laughs> purity <laughs> dairy has come out with a nutty buddy ice cream, where they've just basically took the nutty buddy spun it around and just put it into a gallon jug and it is perfecto. Oh. It is unbelievable. 
Oh, I got it. So it's only purity has done that. That's it. Only purity dairies that I could find. Oh my goodness. I got to, I got to get a hold of that. I got to, I got some work to do obviously before uh, <laughs> tomorrow's show. Um, everybody, we appreciate you guys listening. We appreciate you guys following us on Twitter at D through sports. Uh, also subscribing to our YouTube channel. Hey, listen, Drive I got to mention this Adam real quick. You talked about the YouTube channel. We did have a winner on our t-shirt. Uh, we talked about, you know, <laughs> if oh, we make a comment, we, uh, we would send you a t-shirt. I'm going to go one more time. <laughs> you make a comment on this episode, we'll send you another t-shirt of drop through sports. All right. First comment, first person comment. We, Cause obviously we're, we're a fledgling industry here. We can't just give, if we got a thousand people comment, I can't give away a thousand t-shirts. No, no, no. First comment. The first comment on this episode easily. Who was our first person to comment? Cause I didn't get uh, Michael Rambo. Michael Rambo. <laughs> our, from, uh, Yes. I don't know where is he lived. Danville, he's, he's Kentucky, a, maybe? No, he's in Lexington, man. Lexington, okay. Lexington guy. He's my Kentucky connection, man. He there he goes. Graduated Congratulations. Together, so we want to get him his, his T-shirt for sure. Um, but like you said, Brees, first person to uh, comment, uh, once we get this one posted on our YouTube channel, you will be getting uh, a T-shirt as well. Uh, so check out our upcoming episodes that you see over here, um, oh, over to uh, – to the left of the screen here and also below us you click on my uh picture of me and paul that's where you can subscribe right from the screen and for paul brees and brentwood tennessee adam freeman coming to you from atlanta georgia you've been listening to drive through sports with adam and paul